Hey, good evening, y'all. We are Right Side Broadcasting here reporting from McAllen, Texas. Guess what, guys? We just actually witnessed the real wall just a second ago, and I'm going to get these guys to talk about it a little bit more in a second here from Super Bowl Sunday in Texas. We were... We were in Laredo early this morning. We talked about it. We were like, you know what, let's go see the real wall. And so we're here. And I promise there is a wall here. We'll have it in the documentary for us or for you guys. Um, Border Patrol talked to us on our way out a little bit earlier and pretty much said to us, hey, we don't really want you guys coming back here. It's private property. We were kind of blockaded. There were five vans. It was a little bit extra, but we appreciate them doing our jobs, or their jobs, and uh, we appreciate you guys supporting us and giving us the ability to kind of tell you guys about it. But right here, I got Bailey Byers, Jordan Parker, and Liz Willis here to talk about it. Bailey, we saw the steel slats that Jim Acosta famously leaned up on and put up on his live stream he had a little, about a, a little bit ago. What did that look like to you, and how do you think that that wall will be effective? Yeah, thanks, Max. So I thought it was kind of interesting that although it seemed like pretty substantial and pretty sturdy um, infrastructure, the problem was there was gaping holes everywhere. Yeah. So despite the fact that there are locations where there you know, is a wall or a steel barrier, whatever you want to call it, um, it was kind of interesting that there were so many loopholes um, everywhere. So, and Liz had made a good point. We had talked about this earlier. She said, well, maybe, you know, it's because they can pinpoint certain areas that they can keep track of, um, which totally makes sense. So it's something kind of interesting to think about, too. So we've seen a lot today. We decided to take a detour from uh, Laredo, which is where we previously were, about 140 miles away. And now we're near McAllen Mission Area in Texas. So kind of interesting. We also, when we were talking to one of the border agents, he said this was the border or, or he said it was the bird watching capital of the U.S., which I like laughed out loud. I don't know why that was so funny to me, but we've seen a lot of people like bird watching around here. It's definitely um, there's a lot. It's an interesting place to be. So, Jordan, you want to tell the viewers a little bit about what you thought of today? For sure. Yeah, today was a fantastic day. I got to see another part of uh, our beautiful southern border. As, as she mentioned, we talked to some Border Patrol agents who mentioned that McAllen has about five times the traffic that Laredo does. And for those of you asking for us to come to the border, here we are. This is a levee right next to an irrigation canal that you might be able to see um, behind us. And if you head down this road a couple miles, you'll actually run into the steel slats and the um, barrier that uh, you might have seen today on Twitter and we'll see for sure in the documentary. So like she mentioned as well, it was very sturdy. Uh, one of the locals mentioned is about 30 feet tall in most areas, uh, mixed between concrete and steel, but there are gaping holes. So I, Border Patrol is definitely doing the best um, that they can with the resources they were given. We saw a variety of technology, personnel, and physical barrier implemented through the McAllen area. And Liz, do you want to comment a bit more on that and uh, our interactions with the border agents yeah, today? Yeah, definitely. So we've had really positive interactions with all of the Border and Customs Patrol that's been monitoring this area. We've actually kind of been surprised because, as he said earlier, this is about a five times more active area when it comes to illegal activity. So we kind of expected, or at least I did, that the Border Patrols would be stricter, really tough, and kind of just hard internally because they have to deal with so much crime on a regular basis. However, these guys were all extremely friendly, very welcoming. Um, um, they helped us figure out what's legal, what's not so legal, really based on like where we're standing right now. So um, it, if you just move a couple feet in the certain directions, things get a lot easier for you based on what territory you're standing in. Not just United States or Mexico territory, but when it comes to fish and wildlife or international levy um, people, organizations, yeah. you know, there's just a lot of different organizations that have certain property around here. So. I guess to answer your question, our experience so far has been really positive. These guys have been wonderful. And I even had one of them, while telling us that what we were doing was illegal, I had one of them stop to compliment my Make America Great Again hat that I'm wearing today. So I think they were really awesome. I do want to take a moment to explain that while everyone else has their cell phone put away, mine is out because I will be reading the YouTube chat, which is definitely already entertaining today so thank you and if you have any questions this is going to be a, a lot of comments about what we've experienced so far what the documentary is going to be about why we're here and how you can support us and help fund us I will also be taking some questions and letting my team members know what's going on and what you'll have to say so please um, let me know if you have any questions just put a few question marks in so I can know it's more of something you want to ask us versus just you know a normal statement for the chat room and that's all 
That's all I have right now. I'm going to wait for those questions to roll in. Don't forget to donate to Right Side Broadcasting Network. I know you guys are rock stars when it comes to rallies, but right now this is a totally different venue that we're trying to go down right now, a totally different business, everything. This documentary, so we're here right now, and we've said this a few times, but I know we've got some more viewers coming in. Let's check. Right now, just on YouTube alone, we have 280 watching live. It's a pretty good number, so for those of you who are new, we are Right Side Broadcasting Network. We are all down here at the southern border. We're making a documentary, and we're doing this because we know that mainstream media is not showing you guys what exactly is going on. You, As usual, when it comes to rallies or the present or the border in this case specifically, they'll show you a few minutes, if you're lucky, generally a few second clips, but this is going to hopefully answer all of your questions when we are finished with the documentary, so stay tuned for that. Back to you, Jordan. Thank you, and just to comment on the border, uh, we can hear a helicopter actually behind us coming up, and as I mentioned earlier, this, has a, uh, this area of the border has about five times the traffic that Laredo did, and you can definitely um, notice that with Border, Pat border Patrol presence. Uh, we've seen multiple helicopters today, a significantly higher number of Border Patrol vehicles, agents, and technology, which uh, you'll get to see uh, a better description of in the documentary coming to you soon. But it's cool to see how the Border, Pat uh, border Patrol is kind of combating some of the more um, technologically advanced cartels uh, with technology on our side to kind of combat them. So, Max, do you want to comment on some of the technology we saw today? Yeah. So yesterday, if you guys tuned in, we spoke a little bit at length about the sensors that were being uh, implemented at some of the fences in Laredo, or the, really the only fence in Laredo, and in some other places on the border. We didn't see any sensors today. We did see a lot of cameras posted up on some of the portions of the wall. Um, they're higher up, but they have a great aerial view. Uh, couldn't really stop staring at them, to be completely honest. You know, you know somebody's watching you on the other end of that. So other than that, you know, we saw a couple blimps, uh, which was really interesting. Um, you know, we have a couple theories on what their specific target is or what their focus is, whether that's on drones trying to go across, whether that's just actual crossings. Um, it's probably a little bit of both. But we saw some blimps, which is pretty cool. And also just the vehicles themselves seem to be in pretty good shape. They're, they're newer. They seem well-equipped to handle what they're supposed to be going out there and handling. So the tech has been a little bit more comprehensive over here other than Laredo. And that's been um, really cool to look at. We didn't go to an actual official port of entry um, here in McAllen, and so I can't really speak to the difference between the McAllen port of entry and the Laredo. Um, I feel like it's safe to assume it's pretty similar, um, but when we're just talking surveillance, it seems that um, McAllen seems to be on another level or a step ahead of Laredo. I have a question. Okay. Feel free. I'll just go ahead and read it out here. This is from Marie Fremlin, and she says, have you seen any new wall or in progress construction of the wall that President has talked about? Um, so we spoke to some locals in the area who take their 4 by 4s and uh, ride along the levees behind us that runs all the way along and hugs the border for a little while. And uh, they said that that wall has been up for about as long as they've been here, which has been about four years. So we haven't seen any new wall. We, but the answer to your question on the construction, we did see one construction project underway right up on the canal coming off of the Rio Grande River um, towards the end of this already completed wall that sits on the levee. Um, it looked that they were having some pipes run across it. Couldn't, you couldn't really tell exactly what they were doing specifically. However, there is some construction along the already in-progress wall that we're sitting in front of right now. Okay, so she just said it was maintenance, not any new construction. Go for it. <laughs> So this is honestly a funny part of McCallum that we did not have in Laredo, and we have, it looks like a visitor, possibly <laughs> some tourists. Yeah, we'll move over a little bit and let these people pass Stay tuned. for a second. They might have a few questions for us. Hi, how are you? Yeah, so McAllen is actually home to one of the largest populations of what they call here winter Texans, which are snowbirds that, if you're not familiar, are uh, people usually of an older demographic that spend their summers up north in the more uh, moderate temperatures and then come down here in the winter uh, for the more moderate temperatures here. So these villages are, not, I guess, well, some of them are called villages, RV parks, uh, small communities, are dotted along the border here. There's actually one that we, uh, with some residents we spoke to just a few miles down the road, that they actually live, you know, less than 500 yards from the actual border and see lots of uh, Border Patrol activity. So it's interesting to kind of see the mix between Border Patrol, immigration, and then people who just truly love to spend their time down here. So, uh, Bailey, do you want to comment on, our, on the time we got to spend with some of the residents here? 
Yeah, so it was really awesome to talk to some of the people that live here. You know, it, they made it very clear that the sentiment here is most people are very pro-Trump and very for the wall and border security in general, which I thought was really interesting to note considering these people, it affects them on a daily basis. They even, I'm not going to spoil this too much, but they even were mentioning stories of people running literally in their backyards, like trying to flee into the U.S. and obviously making it because they're on the American side of the of the border, but... So, yeah, pretty crazy stories that we heard today. But I was, I guess, not totally surprised, but a little bit pleasantly reassured that these people down here are very, um, they're very enlightened to the humanitarian disaster that's going on. And they're very, you know, pro-Trump and poor pro-border security. So that was uh, really interesting to note. But they were really some interesting people, very talkative. And we actually ran into them as we were, um, I guess, illegally driving where we weren't supposed to be driving. And they were too. And they told us it was fine. They knew the area. So we kind of took their word for it. But yeah, they were some wonderful people. Then uh, we talked to them in a little bit more depth. But you'll see that in the documentary. So yeah, it was really interesting. Jordan? Uh, one thing we will mention that has to go back to the, how the Border Patrol and the residential community mixes is that they told us that just a few minutes before we arrived, there was actually a large apprehension of a group of women and young children um, just literally feet from where uh, we contact or we kind of met them. So that's, it's, I mean, it's happening here, it's happening now, it's happening in broad daylight. These people came through one of the gaping holes that you'll see um, in the border wall and thankfully were apprehended by the um, fantastic Customs and Border Protection people down here. But they said it was a large group, 12 to 15, maybe even more, of mostly women and uh, young tr children. So those, are the, so those are some of the people coming across the border. There's a lot of different groups, a lot of dif different gr demographics. They mentioned they've uh, seen people from multiple nationalities. Um, so Max, if you maybe want to elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah. So, again, I don't want to give away too much of what we're gonna, you're going to see in the documentary, but uh, some of the guys we were interviewing, they said, you know, um, they repeated some of the numbers you guys probably have heard about how they found uh, within a span of a week about 100 different countries represented in people trying to cross the border illegally. Um, there was a number of about 130 countries that was floated out there. I'm not familiar with the exact number, but they were mentioning that there are people from China crossing the border, Syria crossing the border, um, Russia as well. There are a lot of countries that do show what Palestine was also uh, mentioned a couple times in that interview. So, yeah, I think that even though a lot of people are throwing out, hey, like, you know, this is just for Central Americans trying to find a better life, that they're, they're seeking asylum from um, poor economic conditions or poor governments, uh, that doesn't seem to be necessarily fitting that narrative. Um, people are flying into Mexico and then crossing the border. So I think that that's something that should be kept in mind when discussing, hey, this isn't just because, you know, Republicans hate brown people. No, this is an actual epidemic that's occurring where people are trying to cross the border because they know this is America's weak spot. And I think it's important to point out that nationality is not one race. It's hard to be racist towards Mexicans because Mexicans are made up of so many different people from different backgrounds, lifestyles, um, socio uh, socioeconomic classes, just as America is. It's hard to be, you, you wouldn't say you're being racist towards Americans because America is such a melting pot of so many cultures. So the claim that a lot on the left throw out that, oh, we're being, uh, president is being racist towards Mexicans seems to not line up since people from all different um, colors, races, and creeds are coming over the border. Um, so it's, you know, that's one thing that a lot of people that don't come down here and see it firsthand, like we've had the chance to do, don't get to see or acknowledge um, because they're not talking to locals like uh, we've had the incredible opportunity to do. So it's been really cool to see. Yeah, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank all of you guys for tuning in. We really, really appreciate you watching and supporting us. Um, if you're just tuning in, thank you for joining. If you've been following us for a few years now, thank you as well. Um, we're really, you know, kind of going off on a limb here, doing something totally new that we haven't done before. So we have not made a documentary slash short film ever. So this is definitely a new arena that we're exploring, if you will. So thank you again for your support. And if you are willing to help us and to donate, you can do that through rspnetwork.com slash donate. Or you can do that through PayPal, Patreon, or the YouTube Super Chat. And just know we really appreciate it. This money, um, it's really a critical moment for this company. You know, as we gear up for the 2020 elections, it's going to be a crazy election cycle. Even cra midterms were crazy, but this is going to be 
just unparalleled, quite frankly. So it's going to be a very, very exciting time. But to make sure that we're on, on par with the other networks, we have to make sure we have those tools and those resources um, needed to, you know, compete with them. So um, that being said, thank you guys for donating. And if you can donate, we would really appreciate that. No dollar amount is too small. We really just, we really love your support and we really appreciate it. So Max. Oh, okay. So something that a lot of questions, there's a similar one, and it's a very good question. My family actually had the same one. I sent them photos, and they saw the giant hole mm -hmm. in between the wall. So the question is, is there gaps between Trump's wall and the old wall? Are there gaps between the old wall? What, what is, what's going on with the, with the wall and all the holes in it? What have y'all noticed so far? Thank you, Bailey. We can talk um, from what I saw, feel free to correct this, but from my observation, it looks like that those gaping holes um, were in between structures that were probably built around the same time because there hasn't been, to my knowledge, a significant amount of new construction lately. That's why the president is pushing for the $5.7 billion border security package. Um, so we're not quite there yet with the Trump administration. And I just want to note that um, throughout the Bush and Obama administrations, and I believe... Clinton as well. Um, there was a couple hundred, at least a couple hundred miles worth of border barrier um, actually constructed during that time. So I just want you, I just want you guys to be clear that this is, um, you know, this may not be part of Trump's wall, but you know, it's been here for a while, and he's hoping to, you know, continue that to, and yeah, finish the wall and really ensure national security. It should be hashtag like finish the wall instead of yeah. It's, it's misleading. It's otherwise. very misleading. It's mm -hmm. misleading in the fact that everyone miss is misled to believe, misinterprets that President Trump is the first one to put up this role, and that's why he's so racist, the right? the Democrats voted for it, too. <laughs> it's they not. He's just it. trying to finish it. We've already invested so much American money into this wall, and just to leave it here with so many gaps is a waste of that money that's already been spent. So I would change it from build the wall to finish the wall. And if you're interested in seeing that, there's a spoiler of the wall and the one we're talking about in particular on our Instagram account. So if you want to look at that picture, you can go to Instagram and search RSB. N T V. So go ahead and like that photo and we really appreciate it. More thoughts on any gaping holes and I'll let you know if anyone let me see really quick. I don't see any questions right now. Don't forget this is a QA. So if you have any questions, I'll be reading it and giving it. You could almost give them a cross the border interview. Don't I don't know, y'all. Someone wanted to know exactly where we were and really good question bird watching capital of america we love birds <laughs> so right uh now we're at this stretch i'll build off what they said in a little bit but to answer the question of where we are we're just north of mccallan i'm around in the mission area if you kind of look at mission or i think it's palmsville or palm something if you look on your map it's palmsville something like that if you go straight West, west, straight west, straight south, the wherever the, 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 the closest point of the border you can find to Palmsville is where we're located. Uh, we're very close to the National Butterfly Community, National, <laughs> National Butterfly Conservation, and the um, National Wildlife Refuge. So uh, it's been a long day, but it has been uh, incredible in commenting on that. The gaps you do see were done. Uh, at times when Democrats were in power, when Nancy Pelosi, the same woman who's calling on uh, Trump's wall to be immoral, was the same one who voted and passed legislation to build some of the walls we saw today. So I'd call out to her directly. We spoke to a resident saying, Nancy, you were invited to come down here right along with them. They would love, love to show you their home, to show you the problems they face, and to show you the migrants that come through here every day. A lot of the construction you're seeing online, a lot of that is happening more towards San Diego and the California area where a lot of maintenance is needed. All the wall we saw today was in very good condition, still sturdy, um, no broken or bent portions other than the gaping holes you saw. But again, um, they, just they, they just walked through. Now, as they mentioned earlier, that could be to funnel migrants through and have a border patrol meet them at that area. But um, that's democratic wall to me. I mean, that is... It doesn't get much clearer than that. That wall was built when Democrats were in power. So I'd note that, and I'd definitely call on Democrats if you're watching or uh, anyone who hears this. Just remember, go back to a time when uh, you put that wall there and kind of bring that back to present day and wonder, do you really believe it's immoral or do you just really not, the president, really not want um, the president to have a victory? So I'd keep that in mind as you move forward and hopefully come to good faith negotiations at the table unlike Nancy Pelosi was doing on Twitter today. So make sure to check her page out and see what she has to say, Max. It also should be mentioned that those gaping holes that you will see and that you might see in the picture as well 
are actually dirt roads um, yeah. that do lead from the river. Um, there are different little farming communities and little fields down on the other side of these levees off to our right. And um, that's where, that's kind of why there are these holes, is that there's these dirt roads without any gates, without any sort of security parameters to protect those holes, to allow people to go down, to, to allow um, the companies that do the agriculture down there. Um, there is no security there to prevent that hole from being a weakness in the security. Um, so that's really interesting. It's not like, you know, you've got this huge stretch of wall in the middle of nowhere and there are these gaping holes. They're, they're actually roads that cut through and lead towards the river. So it seems to be very easy to find the, hole, the holes in the wall. Um, those of you that have been asking about, those of you that have been asking about uh, the documentary air date, we don't have a date as of yet. Uh, we're still, we have a lot of editing to do. We have a lot of piecing together on our clips, our interviews, everything like that. All the footage that we've been taking since early Friday morning. We've got to piece all of that together and put that together for you guys and make sure that it looks good, make sure that it's professional. And so we don't have an air date now. Um, we, we will keep you guys updated. The moment we decide on the air date is the moment we'll let you guys know. Um, and we will keep you updated on that. I wish I did have a date for you, but we have a lot of editing to do. We may even still have some shooting that we would like to do um, in an official capacity with Border Patrol. We still have a couple different things here and there that we would love to kind of piece together. So stay tuned on a release date. Hopefully we'll have that out to you soon, but I don't have a specific date yet. Any questions, Liz? Unfortunately, due to the timing, it doesn't seem that there are a lot of farmers out and about farming as we kind of drive by. Um, it doesn't seem like these are rural farmers. It doesn't seem that these are small business farmers. It seems to be very corporate yeah. and very, um, at least, corporate affiliated. And so there, it's not like we're kind of have that um, old image of a farmer who's kind of doing it for subsistence farming and to farm to feed his family. It's more as a business. So we haven't really had the opportunity to speak to a lot of farmers about um, how they feel about the wall. But as I think it was Bailey a little bit earlier mentioned, there seems to be a large majority in this area and along the border that seem to have some strong feelings or at least a lean towards building a wall or a lean towards more border security. So I think that even if we did have that conversation with farmers, I feel like it's safe to assume um, we heard a really rough story from a couple of people we were speaking to um, earlier today about how they saw, they found a burnt corpse in the sugarcane fields um, towards the border because they were doing they were burning the sugarcane and there was uh, what they believe was an immigrant hiding in the fields so they wouldn't get caught um, and so that was that's really the only really conversation we've had that's centered around agriculture towards the border. I will comment. Yeah. We have some breaking news. Yeah, this is, we have some updates on the Super Bowl. No one kneeled during the Super Bowl national anthem, which was fantastic. Um, I'm sure the president was very pleased to see that. And um, that shows that really, at, oh, you can see another helicopter coming behind us. Um, they are pretty active around this. But yes, um, no one kneeled at the Super Bowl, which is fantastic. And I also will say, when we were talking to residents today, the sentiment was very much that they were not watching the Super Bowl uh, because uh, they s just don't respect or uh, don't not I shouldn't say respect is the word. They don't appreciate the sentiment of disrespecting the flag. A few of them we spoke today were veterans, and they weren't very pleased um, with the fact that people were kneeling or not uh, paying respect to the national anthem and to our flag. So interesting sentiment to see today. Um, but that's some great news coming out of the Super Bowl that hopefully we've moved past this and we can start to, uh, as the Democrats would say, heal from this divide in our nation. Do you have any more questions, Liz? So a lot of people are kind of confused. They're wanting us to pan the wall. Will you explain once again that we're from the levee yeah. and find the actual wall? Okay, so <laughs> we planned on doing this in front of the wall. We really did, I promise you guys. Uh, we found a pretty good spot to do it, and we kind of did a little bit of game planning. However, Border Patrol did stop us um, and told us, hey, you guys can't hang out here. Uh, this is private property, um, that there's some sort of international organization that deals with levees and water um, that owns it, and it's private property. Wildlife too, 
Yeah, it's the wildlife. Uh, there's a wildlife center organization that also handles the property surrounding it. Um, so we would pan the wall. We did pan the wall. You'll see that in the documentary. Um, but right now we can't because Border Patrol told us we couldn't. Um, and obviously we respect Border Patrol. We appreciate everything that they do for us. So we wanted to respect their orders, respect their wishes, um, obey the law as well. And uh, so if we have an opportunity, if we had an opportunity, we would give it to you, unfortunately. Just not possible. Have to watch the yeah, <laughs> yeah. You will have to watch the documentary. We'll pan that. We haven't. We hope to do that as soon as we wrap like, and, yeah. filming with you all. Um, but also, it's <laughs> it's important to note that um, we are guests here in the Border Patrol, so to work, so to so to speak, workspace. Um, so as the sun sets behind us, you can see this is a time when uh, migrant activity really picks up, and we wouldn't want to be impeding them in any way or preventing them from doing their job to the best yeah. of their abilities. As you can see, we're kind of blocking a road space here, and we definitely wouldn't want to do that if they were um, trying to apprehend migrants. So uh, we thank them profusely today. Um, they continue to do phenomenal work, but obviously we want to obey the law, as Max said, and not um, get in the way of them doing the jobs that they are here to do. But, yeah, you'll have to stay tuned for the documentary to see some impressive both aerial and ground shots of the wall. Okay, just in case you're just tuning in, thank you for tuning in. We're really excited to have all of you guys here. Your support means the world to us. Um, we can't do this without you. So if you if you like what you're seeing, then please donate. You can do that through rsbnetwork.com slash donate or PayPal, Patreon, or the YouTube Super Chat at the bottom of your screen. Like I said earlier, if you're just tuning in, um, you're hearing this for the first time, but it's a really critical time for this company. You know, we're really excited as we gear up for the 2020 election campaign, but it will be... Um, unparalleled in terms of craziness. So we want to make sure we have all the tools and all the resources needed in order to ensure that we're on par with the other networks. So we do that through your support. So thank you so much for donating. And if you can donate, um, just know we really, really appreciate that. So. Okay. We're just listening to Liz ask her question. Yeah, I would say I definitely. F oh, sorry. Okay. Liz just asked. Someone, uh, someone just asked if we feel safe here. Dan the plumber. Thanks, Dan, for your question. I would say I definitely feel safe here. It's very, I mean, other than the few bird watchers and border agents that we've seen, it's very peaceful out here. Granted, we are about a half mile to a mile from the actual border, but there, it's very nice out here. It's very peaceful and safe. The only time I didn't feel safe, now you guys will see a little bit more of this in the documentary, so really you have to watch it, is um, Liz and I actually went into Nuevo Laredo, Mexico yesterday. That felt like a war zone. I've been to Mexico a, a dozen times, and I have never felt like that. Granted, I went to Baja, so a different area, but it was at, like the coolest, craziest, most mind-blowing thing I've probably ever done. It literally felt like a war zone. So be sure to stay tuned. We have some actual footage of refugees that are actually um, in connection with the Remain in Mexico policy. So we have a lot of cool stuff on that front for you guys, so definitely check that out. But in terms of McAllen, feel very, very safe. What do you guys think? I feel safe as well, and I, again, that's credit to Border Patrol. They do a phenomenal job here, so I don't have any high security concerns. They're great at what they do, and I have full confidence that they're uh, doing their jobs to the best of their abilities. I don't have anything more to say about that. Okay, any more <laughs> questions? I'm going to direct this one at you, because okay. you're the fourth guy, but it's the whole thing, or maybe I'll just play any questions. I would absolutely love to, 100%. Like, the, when, we, when, we go, when we go eat, which I know it just kick off, when we go eat, Oh, uh, the question was, will we be watching the Super Bowl? I will watch the Super Bowl. I'm looking forward to it. I know I'm missing kickoff and a little bit of the first few plays. Can't wait to follow up and see what I'm missing. Um, but I'm excited. I, I do love football. Um, I've kind of – I respect – I don't like what they do. I don't like how they do it. Um, but I respect their ability to use their platform. I respect their ability to express their freedom of speech. And so I'm not going to – I don't put a lot of money towards – um, the NFL, I haven't since they've done it. I just watch the games, and that's kind of what I'm going to do. I love the Super Bowl. It's the two best teams in the NFL squaring off. There are not a lot of better things to do on a Sunday night than that, so I'll be watching it. Coming on the Super Bowl real quick, um, I will not be watching it. I'm more of a college guy, so War Eagle to all my fellow Auburn fans out there. Uh, I just am kind of annoyed with how politicized and commercialized the NFL has got. We were discussing this a little bit earlier, but um, there's so much politics surrounding it. it. What used to be a fun 
you know, kind of community event that brought people together for fun, healthy competition has really turned into something um, very politicized. I know a few nights ago Don Lemon had the lady who was singing the national anthem uh, and kind of questioning her as to why she would do this and support, you know, so to speak, the sentiment of the national anthem and flag, which to me was somewhat disrespectful. And he was kind of um, playing that identity politics as he does so often um, as to why you would do this. So it kind of confused me as to why you would not support um, our country, Democrat or Republican. We're still all American. So for me, that kind of um, that fun, free-spirited nature of the Super Bowl and the NFL has been lost, and I just can't get excited about it anymore. <laughs> Yeah, first of all, go dogs. Second of all, as a proud military, soon to be spouse, um, I could probably go on an eight hour rant about the NFL, but I'll spare you. That was really my only two cents. I just had to throw that in there. <laughs> uh, we had another question from uh, one of the viewers and said, Do you hear gunshots? No, I haven't heard a single gunshot. Uh, yeah. I am glad it would make for a great story if we did hear gunshots, but thankfully for our safety, we have not. <laughs> And I hope to continue it that way. But um, if something happens while we go live, you'll be the first to know. So, <laughs> any other questions? What is the most shocking thing you've learned? The question was, what's the most shocking thing you've learned on this trip? Either of you care to comment? One thing that stuck out to me, I don't know that I was shocked by this necessarily because I read up on this all the time, but someone, we talked to a border agent yesterday and he briefly had mentioned, you know, we were talking about um, the narrative that the left paints in terms of the migrants who come across the border and he had mentioned, uh, we had said something um, kind of inferring that these people were fleeing um, hardships, economic um you know, disaster, humanitarian disasters, whatever that may be. And he just looked at us and said, it's not always that way. And that just stuck out to me um, just because, you know, you could really tell he couldn't give us a lot of information, unfortunately, but there's a lot more to the story. And I just think it's really ironic about how all these lawmakers that fly first class to and from California and then go to D.C. and make their laws and, you know, they never come down here. They have no idea what's going on. They don't know who these people are. They have no idea in terms of, you know, it's real reality. So when he said that to me, that really stuck out to me. It also was just incredibly eye-opening to go into Mexico for me. We got a really crazy video. I'm not going to spoil it, but you have to stay tuned. So, guys, any thoughts? Um, again, kind of building off what she said, it's shocking to see the lack of visibility um, that this place, honest visibility, transparency that this place gets, especially for lawmakers in D.C. Um, while I think it's phenomenal that uh, the Speaker of the House would like to go see our troops uh, abroad. I think it's really important and crucial that she come down here and see the actual situation on our own uh, homeland. Oh, yeah. um, I don't I don't know the last time she's been down here. I can't remember it. I don't think it's been recently. But today we had the opportunity to talk some of the talk to the people who live closer to the border than almost anyone else and see firsthand the issues and the crisis that go on here. They said in their own words, humanitarian crisis, migrant crisis, security crisis. And so I think it, I, you know, personally I would call on Democratic and Republican lawmakers who think this is made up or as they say manufactured to come down here and speak with the locals who don't have the voice and the platform that you do. Because it seems like um, people are just push, uh, lawmakers are pushing partisan politics and really putting their values and their donors um, over the needs, the wants, and the worries of the American people uh, living on the front lines of this situation down here. The, really quick, just want to throw this out. The shocking thing for me has just been seeing the activism by the local people here in McAllen. Um, a lot, you would hear a lot, like there are people who support the wall, there are people who support the wall. Not only there are people who support the wall, there are people here who are taking it upon themselves to enforce yeah. the laws. And, and yeah, yeah, really self-proclaimed border agents. They're really uh, trying very hard to increase border security. They go out in their four by fours, their little four wheelers, and they run up on the levees back and forth really quick here and there. And they talk to each other. They've got the, I think one of them said like they've got Border Patrol's number on speed dial. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so they they really have a great relationship with Border Patrol. They work together, and I think that's been the shocking and honestly really cool thing that I've seen. Yeah. 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 And that. I'm going to have to pass this question because everyone who knows me is a pretty pessimistic person. Um, but to be honest, the, I think the optimist side of me just knows that like the parts that I can control and the people that I can make attempts at influencing are 
what I can deal with. Like if I can if I can have a good relationship with Mike Rogers, my current congressman from my area, if I can talk to people who have, you know, influence like we've had multiple conversations with multiple different border patrol agents that have spanned up to about what, 10 minutes or so. Um, yeah. So like if I know that I can have those kind of conversations and have that kind of influence, then that's how I can have a little bit of optimism. I don't know if this is optimism in general or optimism about the border crisis, uh, but for me, honestly, you just got to do you. You kind of have to not care about what other people think. In the very polarized climate, it's easier for people to kind of hide their beliefs or hide their opinions for fear of people ostracizing them or disowning them in some radical scenarios. But be confident in yourself. Be confident. Um, At the end of the day, we still live in the greatest nation on earth. We still have a fantastic system of checks and balances that although it may uh, seem to fail us, we still live in the freest place um, on this planet. So to me, you know, waking up every day in America is a blessing. And even though it might seem treacherous or divided at some times, you, um, you know, you honestly just have to think, you know, we live in a pretty sweet place. And although uh, each side may have their differences at the end of the day, hopefully we can come together um, and talk about them as opposed to uh, fighting about them on Twitter, although I do love Twitter. Um, and if you're asking how you can be involved, um, I don't know. Get on Twitter. <laughs> Tweet your opinion, share your opinions, make sure to talk with the people um, you interact with. Uh, discourse is really important and something that we've lost in today's society. We tend to just sink to the lowest of lows instead of rising to the occasion and having a um, civil discussion about it. Discussion gets us much farther um, than arguing, so I'd encourage you to be Uh, Stay positive. Know that uh, at the end of the day, we're all still doing okay. Um, And just keep on keeping on. Absolutely, yeah. So blessed to be an American. And I think for me, it really comes down to our leadership. We have an incredible executive branch. We have incredible lawmakers up on Capitol Hill that work so hard for us. And this isn't to say that they obviously, you know, don't have their challenges, you know, when they're going about those uh, procedures. But um, it really just comes down to we have phenomenal men and women who serve in our law enforcement, our military, every branch. And it's just really, for me, it comes down to our leadership and the people who serve. And it really just makes me so passionate to be an American. So. Jordan's getting a lot of love in the YouTube chat. That's what Liz just said. Thank you all for your love. <laughs> okay. Okay. So first question was about when the documentary airs. So we don't have an air date yet. That's only because we have so much footage that we have to sift through and figure out production, um, production details and that sort of thing. So we'll be sure to keep you guys informed on that. I'm sure we'll have that in the next at least two weeks or so. We'll know when it's going to air. It's definitely a bigger project, so it's going to take a lot of time to sift through, but we're really excited about it. What was the second question? No, there was something. Oh, Mexico. Okay, so if you're wondering where the direction of Mexico is, it's that way. All this... Brush. All this brush, brush yes. <laughs> um, it looks like you could probably hide in it very well. Um, we can demonstrate if y'all would like. Yeah, we could honest. demonstrate. Um, the last down. question was asking if we dropped Nancy Pelosi off here, would she be able to find her way home? I'm going to say probably not. What do you think, Max? I'd say... <laughs> he, he, he thinks he might find a snake down there, so that's true. No, I can't do the accent. Jordan's really good with accents. We could get we could get Gage's Siri to do it though if we wanted the crocodile the crocodile hunter voice. Um, but to answer the question, if Nancy Pelosi could find her way home from here, I'd say probably she would end up crossing the border and end up where she wants this country to look like anyway. So yeah, it would it would seem like home to her. So that that'd be my answer. All right. <laughs> I assume this is not what most immigrants look like, but I don't want to discriminate. As you just saw, and I'm out of breath because I'm out of shape. Um, <laughs> you can see that the brush down there is pretty thick. I don't know if you can see me or not. I probably stand out like a sore thumb. But if I was wearing camo or dark clothes, you wouldn't be able to see me. 
<laughs> Again, I'm out of breath, so excuse me. Um, Nancy Pelosi was dropped off here. She probably walked to the butterfly garden. <laughs> she did hang out there, maybe see some pigs and birds. Honestly, she's the clientele who bird watches here. Totally. Like, honey, use your millions. Just come and retire. Like, there's extremely friendly she people will. down there. And then she'll have the, the majority of them backyard. are not Democrats, but there's no wall, so it's not immoral. And you have uh, plenty of migrants that you can welcome in. I don't know if I want to say because I'm scared one of you out there is going <laughs> to donate and I'm going to have to do it. But because we're short on time, uh, the question she asked was how much would it cost for one of you to donate for me to swim across the Rio Grande? Hmm. Since I don't have my passport because it's getting renewed, State Department, if you're out there, please speed this process up. Um, five grand. Six grand and I'll do it in a uh, Trump Speedo. <laughs> So if any of all out there have the resources or means and would love to see some disturbing entertainment of me swimming across, <laughs> um, I, you know, I can swim, I can float. So worst case scenario, I will end up in the Gulf of Mexico and I'll just float to Corpus Christi. Who knows? But yeah, I mean, <laughs> with all of that being said, if you do do want to see that video, we will put that together. Just make sure you put that in the donation that you want to see Jordan live up to that bet. 5000 to see him do it, 6000 for him to do it in a Trump Speedo. Um, and I think that's a great way to end it. We do really appreciate all the support you guys give us. We've had a great time here at the border. We've really enjoyed being able to up close and personal, actually see and understand what's been going on, see it for our own eyes, and kind of um, not take anyone else's word for it, but kind of see it. Uh, in the way other people see it. Yeah. Uh, so we really appreciate that. If you want to continue to support this project that we still have a release date to be determined on, please donate to the YouTube Super Chat, that dollar sign in the bottom right-hand corner. We have PayPal, we have Patreon. You can mail a check or even an encouraging letter. That's always really awesome to read. Send them to the address that a moderator is putting in the chat. There are a couple different portals that you can find on rsbnetwork.com slash donate. You guys see that on the banner right below me right now. Um, so those are the ways you can donate, you can support us, you can fund us. We really appreciate everything you guys do for us. We've loved these projects you're doing, uh, or we're doing, and we appreciate that you guys help make that happen. Really quick, we're going to give you guys our social media plugs um, so you guys can follow us and what else we do. We're going to go to CPAC later this month, February now. Uh, so at the end of this month, we'll be in D.C. for the Conservative Political Action Conference, and we'll have other great things coming up for you before President Trump hits the campaign, tra campaign trail up against those pesky Democrats. So uh, we're going to do that plug really quick and say our final thoughts for you guys, and then we're going to go eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to briefly mention, so, okay, on Tuesday, February 5th, this coming Tuesday, we are going to have, the three of us, are going to be offering you guys live coverage prior and um, following to the State of the Union. We're, it's going to be really entertaining, so you really should consider tuning in for sure. We're going to have lots of fun doing that. Also, I'm going to have a weekly slash bi-weekly show coming out soon. So that's in the works, um, in the production phases, so be sure to stay tuned for that as well. Liz, do you have anything to add? No, I just wanted to say goodbye and hop back over here really quick. We love you guys. Thank you for your support. The chat room was lit. There were a lot of viewers on the YouTube live. What? Yeah. Yeah, I liked it. I thought it was a great turnout. Excellent turnout today. So I was just over there reading questions and feeding them to the team. If you liked that new setup about having someone off camera talking to the team so that we're not all looking at our phones, let us know. We're always working um, to improve and trying to find things that best suit you. So don't forget, like they said, to follow us on Twitter. If you're not, that's RSB Network. And on Instagram, we are RSBN TV. And there are some behind the scenes footage. We went live a couple of times and there's photos of the actual wall that we've posted and photos from the trip itself. So those who are asking to see photos of the wall, go to RSBN TV on Instagram. We love you guys. Don't forget to donate because your money is super important when it comes to being a successful business and being able to carry on as a business for the future when it comes to rallies for 2020 and going to CPAC and the State of the Union Tuesday to support all these fine reporters. Would anyone else like to say anything or should I just yeah. go ahead and... No, we all want to say something real quick. Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just want to thank you guys as well. As you uh, might know, this is my first time out here, so I appreciate the warm welcome. What? Hey, you got to thank the people. So thank you for the love. Thank you for supporting me. Um, if there's any constructive criticism you have, uh, be sure to let me know. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Um, as she mentioned, 
Uh, we're going to be more active on Instagram, posting more behind-the-scenes photos. We did a few live um, Q&As today, some short updates, so be sure to uh, look out for that. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Max and I are pretty active on Twitter. Active. Twitter is my second home, so um, <laughs> if you want to see some juicy, controversial content, be sure to look out for that. And, yeah, like I said, thank you for all the love and support. It's been fantastic being what, out here. What's your Twitter handle? <laughs> Shameless plug. My Twitter handle is at Jordan Parker underscore. Don't forget the underscore. Uh, whoever has at Jordan Parker, I'll be DMing you soon. Um, Got to get that straight up name, but we'll find out. So, yeah. <laughs> Max, what's your Twitter handle? Mine is Max Kleiber, R-S-B-N, M-A-X-K-L-E-I-B as a boy, E-R, R-S-B-N. It's really important you spell it for the people. So that's my Twitter handle. You guys know how active I am there. Please follow me, and uh, you'll kind of have some better updates of what's going on here and what's going on, going on in D.C. My Twitter handle, if you want it too, is at Byers underscore Bailey with two E's. So be sure to follow me on Twitter as well. And I guess we'll see you guys Tuesday for State of the Union. So, oh, we have one more thing. <laughs> we want to give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to our cameraman, Gage. He is behind the scenes and you can't see him all the time, but he is the one bringing you all these beautiful shots in this vista you see behind us. So make sure to hit him up on Twitter. I don't know what his Twitter is, but he has one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he's doing a phenomenal job um, out here with us and dealing with our craziness. So thank you to Gage and thank you to all of you. We will see you next time. Be sure to tune in to the State of the Union on Tuesday. Buenas noches. <laughs> That's, That's good night in um, <laughs> in Spanish. <laughs> it's good night in Spanish. But it, <laughs> but again, as you can tell, uh, we're having a great time here. We're gonna go get some food and be sure to uh, keep up to date with us social media platforms. Thank you guys so much again and we'll see you next time. Where are you going? Where are you going?